Hey. Hi, Gail. How are you? Good. So we're doing a refresh on Sylvia. our Sylvia crew review. We're going to start, uh, you've lived with the Sylvia V3 for a few years now. How you know all of her secrets. <laughs> she whispers to me every now and again when I'm walking by, Gail. Gail, guess what? Yeah, um, so why don't you take me through features, specs, etc. We can show some internals too. This machine, yeah, we can take the top off. This machine uh, does not come with the PID. Let me just preface that okay. right off the bat. This is something we added on. And what that does is control the uh, temperature of the boiler to within one degree of whatever you want it to do. Okay. Makes it more precise. This has a single boiler, <clears throat> brass. 12 ounce boiler mm -hmm. that does both functions and that's why the PID people added on. Uh, when you ask this to do steam temperature it's going to take it up into the 285 or so range. Okay. Brewing is around 200, 204 right in through there. Mm -hmm. One boiler doing one function. Um, there can be quite a fluctuation in the temperature with the, the standard thermostat? With the standard thermostat. There's thermostats okay. that say hey I'm cold, uh -huh. kick in and it kicks in. It brings it up to a little bit higher than it needs to be, and then it levels off. Well, that difference between the low point and the high point can be 15 degrees. Okay. If you take a shot at that lower point, it could be pretty sour. Okay. Or if it, above the high point, a little bit better. So that's where the PID comes in. Okay. So this is your brew button. If the PID wasn't there, this would be off like that. And mm -hmm. then when you put this on, you would be brewing. Hot water. You can get hot water out of the steam arm by going like this and making the pump run. Get your hot water. Okay. And this is your steam. Now the boiler has kicked in. It's going to bring it up to steam temperature. Okay. It gets hot up here from the uh, ambient heat of the boiler. Mm -hmm. It's a, just a passive. Oh, woohoo. I tried to throw that at you. <laughs> water tank with two hoses. The, the manual does not mention the second hose. We get that question all the time. This one with the V cut in it is the one that draws the water from the water tank to the boiler. This is a return for overpressure from the boiler. Okay. And then your water tank comes out like that. It's a mambo. Yeah, it is. So for, easy cleaning. For a machine this size, it's pretty big. So the um, hoses is one of the questions we get. The other question that we get, Gail, that I thought we might address is the laser film finish. <laughs> of, so the machine will come with white on top here yeah. and on the drip tray My cover. machine is scratched and white. <laughs> it's supposed to be stainless. And when they make this, it's on every surface curled over and everything because it's on a flat piece of stainless and then they form it. Because otherwise they would be scratching the stainless. So you gotta find it somewhere on the edge, somewhere you'll see, mm -hmm. and peel it off. And, and up here you gotta take the screws off because it's underneath the screws yep. and then pull it. Yep. Okay. Exactly. So we'll get a screwdriver and show the inside. Fifty. Uh, let me get into this. Fifty-eight millimeter chrome-plated brass uh, professional portafilter. Mm-hmm. Uh, drip tray down here. That's the one thing on the Sylvia, I would say um, the drip tray, if it was a little bit bigger, would be nice. You can see it's on the shallow side. I also wish that it was um, more representational of the cover, because if you're not, you might think that all of that, all of that is your drip tray. And it's not. No. No. I mean, I don't know how many times I've seen this thing overflowing, <laughs> you know. And then we've got um, traditional steam arm here. Yep. You can tell it's a traditional because it's got the rubber ding-dong on yeah. it. It's not an anti-burn, and it comes with a one-hole tip. And this newer version, the V3, this articulates. Around. The other one just just to go left and right, mm -hmm. so it was a little bit harder. And then they put on a new steam knob, and they changed the handle here, too. Okay, here's your brass boiler. There's your steam valve down in there. As you turn this knob, you can see it, it turns. I just mm -hmm. piddled down there. Nice, okay. Gail. Yeah, nice. And so um, this is the big boiler. Now, all yeah. these wires here, though, are not stock, These right? wires here, these little skinny ones, these are PID controls. Okay. So they go up and through here. The typical would come with these two thermostats. That one there, mm -hmm. you can see it's not even hooked in. Okay. That one there, and then the one on the front. So you bypass those, and you do it in a different way when you got a PID. And then... Um, Copper tubing. That's coming from the... Top. Oh, yeah. That's coming from the water reservoir. Let me look there. Or, no. Let me look. No, that's, keep, that? that's coming off the top of the boiler where your steam comes oh, from. Oh, it connects to the steam. Yep. Your so water I, I reservoir is coming in right here. So it's sucking water up through that hose and then it's coming in. Yes. Okay. Oh, over there. I see. See the, see the black thing wiggling? That's attached to this hose right here. Got it. In, in, out, and then through the brew head is the other out. 
Okay, and so because uh, single boiler, um, you can't burn steam at the same time. Mm -mm, so, but you will burn it up if you don't do it in the proper fashion too. If you're doing a lot of steaming, like right now we have this on steam temperature, mm -hmm. it's up at that 280. If we do a lot of steam, you're depleting the water inside this boiler, not the water reservoir, the boiler. Okay. And if you do too much, the heating element inside that boiler becomes exposed to air, hence the water is what keeps it cool enough so it doesn't burn itself up. If there's oh, air around it, it's okay. going to burn itself up. And so the reason that um, uh, that can happen on this machine in particular is because it doesn't have an autofill. Does not, the pump does not kick in. The, the boiler does not sense I don't have enough water and kick in the pump putting water back in there. Okay. You have to do it manually by making the pump run. So after you get done steaming, shut this off. Open this up. Pull it down. Calm down. Turn this on and make hot water come out. And then that's going to, to serve two purposes. It will cool it down for your shot after you've steamed, and then it will also refresh the water in the boiler so you've always got a full boiler of water. Exactly. And if you don't do that, you're going to burn it up. And I, <coughs> I just ran that, and the hose isn't even in the water tank. But if the water tank is here, <laughs> yeah. you know, hot water would come out. Nice. <laughs> um, the other thing, too, I guess we should talk about is duration. So we have seen people burn out these boilers simply because um, they follow our instructions, <clears throat> but they're trying to steam way too much milk in one go. You cannot do enough for two or three drinks in a go okay do one drink you know maybe you're 10 ounces in 10 ounces in a 20 ounce frothing pitcher which mm -hmm. i don't have sitting here right now but make your drink one drink go back to brewing brew another one make another thing of uh, milk go back and forth don't, okay don't we had a person that was lining up five drinks and then steaming a big steaming thing of milk. Steaming five things yeah. of milk and it's one right after the other and they're wondering why their machine is burning up. Well, that's why. Okay, so because this is still like, what, a 12-ounce 12 12 boiler? 12-ounce boiler. All right. Mm -hmm. Cool. So um, I guess we'll reassemble Sylvia and make a latte. Some assembly required. Oh, Sylvia. This, this machine, for the size of it, has really good steaming power. Mm -hmm. Real good. <clears throat> it's one of the uh, more difficult ones to wrestle, I think, as a new mm -hmm. barista because it of it, because of the power that it has. Yeah. It takes some time. Yep. They put on a three-hole uh, a few years back when they first came out with the V3. And... While it might have been a little bit easier to use in some ways, the boiler wasn't large enough to sustain the, yeah. the hole for three holes. So. Well, I think it was that, but also they had to change the voltage for the U.S., and I think yeah. that also had an yep. impact on its yep. performance. For sure. Okay. I'm going to shut this off because we're done. I want it to start cooling down. Okay. What do you think? What are the odds? Uh, I believe in your star nebulas, Gail. Oh, you got a little wiggle. A little nothing. Mm, I don't know. I got bigger bubbles than it I thought. It looks like a, uh, like a... Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's a little bit of a leaf there, Gail. You, you, know, were, on the, you were on the right track, I you think. You know how when they show oh. Old Man Winter? <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Snowflakes, that's what that looks like to me. You going to taste that, I am. bad boy? What do you think your handiwork? Mm -hmm. Nice and hot. It's yeah. good. Good ratio yeah. of coffee to uh, milk? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, cool. it's good. All right, so that is the Ranchilio Silvia. It's kind of the... Um, uh, sort of first step that most people take when they want to get into kind of a traditional uh, espresso machine. A little nicer than your entry level. It's the next step up. It's got a lot of commercial components to it. And I think something I wanted to clarify is a lot of people will say uh, it's 
picky. No, it's no pickier than, than any, any of the other ones. The, when you get into a non-pressurized porta filter, yeah, you're gonna have to get fussy about the grind of your coffee. And you're gonna have to learn how to steam milk, pro like it as a, as a as a as a pro because you're not you don't have a Panarello. Yeah. So, so fussy? No, it's no. no different than any other machine of this caliber. Exactly. So I think people give it that rap because they they're maybe coming to it from pressurized porta filters exactly. and Panarellos. When people go from like this to a heat exchanger, it's really just going. A more power more lateral yeah so yeah. They, they already understand what the deal is exactly this machine you can get the bottomless portafilter that happens to be what is in my hand too. yeah mm -hmm. so so that's the thing don't don't believe the hype it's not um it's per, not fussier. yeah it's not fussier or particularly mm -hmm. more picky than any other sort of commercial traditional cat's, machine cat's a little pickier and i'm way fussier mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. thanks gail you're welcome